Well, that is the program this hour. Time for Nine News at Six Live right now. Tonight, New Year's Eve, COVID style. Just one new case, but West Aussies ringing in the new year with the toughest of restrictions. Plus... Came here for one bevy and probably head home. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Plus, a holiday heartbreak. A 51-year-old driver killed as WA records its worst road toll in five years. A community rallies around Byford parents whose baby girl was crushed by falling drawers. Seven children nabbed by police in two separate police chases across Perth. Hundreds of homes lost as horror cyclonic winds whip up a monster bushfire in Colorado. And the Australian cricket team on COVID alert with Travis Head ruled out of the Sydney test. This is Nine News Perth with Natalia Cooper. Good evening. WA will ring in the new year under some of the strictest COVID measures in the country as our cluster grew to 14 cases and exposure sites increased in the southwest. As the clock ticks down to midnight, some hospitality venues are shutting their doors with the next stage of vaccine mandates enforced. A New Year's Eve like never before. Perth preparing to send off 2021 in a COVID safe style. <laughs> And inside, there's a different feeling too. Came here for one bevy and probably head home. Yeah. That's pretty much it. It's definitely a bit quieter. It's um, it's not going to be that sort of two and a half thousand people uh, dancing with a with a band and all that type of stuff. But look, it's better than nothing. With dancing plans canned, pub seats will become hot property. Festivals got cancelled, so had to change. We're not getting foot loose, will there? <laughs> We've been going and trying to get as many milk crates as we can. I think that qualifies as a seat. It is still an opportunity for people to celebrate New Year's Eve uh, in far greater freedom than just about anywhere else in the country and most places in the world. But as venues try to cash in tonight, some are also turning staff away, with the first dose jab mandate kicking in for another large group of WA workers, including the hospitality, construction and childcare sectors. Across all these pubs, the majority of Tim McLernan's 350 employees have had their jab, but there's still been some tough conversations. I've got two or three staff that have been with me for 10 years um, and so it's really difficult to sort of you know have to say to them not because of any you know um, misbehaviours or anything like that but I can't employ them anymore as of you know 12.01 tomorrow morning. Port Hedland's Pier Hotel is shutting down. The owner says she refuses to enforce the mandate on staff who are mostly unvaccinated. Unfortunately the fines we'll receive from the government don't make it financially viable. And that's not very responsible but it's also a strange decision. It's estimated close to 40,000 of WA's labour force workers are opposed to the jab, but employers who keep them on the job face fines of more than $100,000. I haven't heard of any other businesses closing for that reason. I have heard of some staff leaving businesses. That's a different matter. WA's COVID backpacker cluster today grew by one. The new case was in hotel quarantine, but fresh exposure sites have popped up in Fremantle, Spearwood and South Bunbury. While masks are only encouraged for public outdoor gatherings tonight, they are mandatory inside venues and dancing is strictly banned. But police want to avoid getting heavy handed with fines for those who breach the rules. At the very last point we do enforcement, so we do a whole range of things before it gets to enforcement. But the organiser of this Boxing Day boat party has been fined. <laughs> Apologetic Deviance Director Gethin Sullivan slapped with a $5,000 infringement for breaching COVID restrictions after admitting patrons were dancing and not wearing masks in his event. Tonight, the party looks different right across the country. In New South Wales, cases have soared to more than 21,000 a month ahead of this prediction. By the end of January, we could be looking at 25,000 cases of, of the virus every single day. Just like the challenges of the last two years, uh, we will get this, we will get through this challenge as well. Queensland's cases spiked above 3,000, its border to WA now extreme risk, while almost 6,000 cases were identified in Victoria. But health chiefs are confident of weathering the Omicron storm. We're up for doing it and we're far better positioned than we were four months ago and far better positioned than last year. A resolution WA hopes it can share. Hopefully 2022, it sort of eases up a bit um, and everyone can get back to normal. Joshua Dorn, Nine News.
A 51-year-old man has been killed in a crash tragedy south of Perth. Two cars collided head-on in Ravenswood. Olivia Donaldson, a woman, was also seriously injured. Natalia, it's hard to believe that anyone survived this crash when you take a look at these pictures. But a 53-year-old woman did and she was transfor transported here to Royal Perth Hospital with serious injuries and is now in a stable condition in the trauma ward. Now, sadly, the same can't be said for the 51-year-old driver of the Subaru who died on impact. Now, the two cars collided head-on on Patterson Road in Ravenswood late yesterday afternoon. Road closures and and investigations extending well into the night. But the deadly crash brings WA's road toll total for the year to 166. Natalia, that's the worst it's been since 2016. OK, Olivia, thank you. An urgent search is underway for a diver missing in waters off Margaret River. It comes after a number of shark sightings in the area in recent days. Lucy McLeod authorities hold grave fears for the man. They do, Natalia. He's missing at a surf spot called The Box. The man, believed to be in his 30s, uh, is uh, entered the water about midday, free diving alone, and he hasn't been seen since. Conditions today were choppy with 50 kilometre an hour winds. And adding to that, fears of at least two sightings of sharks in nearby by waters in recent days. He's described as having long dark hair and was wearing a black wetsuit and camouflage diving fins. And the search, Natalia, is likely to resume at first light tomorrow. Lucy, thank you. Perth's African community is rallying around Byford parents whose baby girl died when a chest of drawers fell on her on Tuesday. One-year-old Taylor was rushed to Armidale Hospital but couldn't be saved. The Rwandan Community Abroad Perth Group has started an online fundraiser to help cover the cost of a funeral. Seven children have been charged after two separate police pursuits across Perth. Police say both dramatic chases involved stolen cars and the youngest arrested is just 11 years old. On foot, going nowhere fast. One by one, a group of kids flee over a Banksia Grove fence. The fourth isn't quick enough. Police arrive at the Azola Street home within seconds. Right on their tail, mate. They caught them straight away. Hands in the air, one child seemingly surrenders just before 1am. Yeah, basically just telling them to stop running and stuff like that. You're under arrest. Police swarm the street alongside the dog squad, running, covering every angle of the home before moving in. At 1 a.m. It was all it was all full on here. They blocked the streets off. Two boys aged 13 and 15, and two girls aged 14 and 11 arrested, ending an hour-long pursuit. It's alleged the group dumped a silver Lexus around the corner on Azola Street just moments before. Police say it was stolen yesterday afternoon in Claremont, just after midnight. It was sighted on the Quinana Freeway, sparking the chase all the way to Banksia Grove. In daylight, police are still at the house on Azola Street where the kids were arrested. Detectives today continuing their inquiries. South of the river, another dramatic pursuit overnight. Three girls, two aged 12, one 15, arrested around 11pm in Canningvale after allegedly dumping a stolen Mitsubishi Mirage in an industrial area. Police say that car was stolen around 9pm on Metalla Crescent in success. Spotting it around 11pm on Row Highway, the chase ending on Craft Street minutes later. Zarisha Bradley, Nine News. Police are hunting a man who broke into a Yokine home and assaulted a woman overnight. The attacker forced his way into the Collins Street house between 12.30 and 1 o'clock this morning. The woman in her 20s eventually managed to run away and so too did the intruder who was wearing only shorts at the time. A man in his 20s has been killed and two others injured after a cliff collapsed at a beach in Victoria this afternoon. Police say six people were under a 30-metre rock face at Bells Beach when it gave way. The man was winched into an ambulance helicopter but sadly died on the way to a Melbourne hospital. Tomorrow marks the official start of a federal election year with voters due to go to the polls by May 21 at the latest. As the waiting game begins for the Prime Minister to call a date, both leaders are gearing up for what's expected to be a tight race.
With the curtain closing on 2021... Happy New Year, Australia. 2021 has been a really tough year. The campaign roadshow will soon be in full swing. <laughs> against a backdrop like no other federal election. COVID is a wild card. COVID cases are soaring and expected to rise even further after National Cabinet agreed to overhaul the definition of a close contact along with isolation and testing rules. Scott Morrison has decided to let it rip. It's certainly safe to relax these measures as we have done, um, given what we're now learning about Omicron. And as Australians prepare to cast their votes, the health of the economy will also be front and centre. Our work in 2022 is to continue to keep our economy strong. Economists say the recovery remains on track despite widespread Omicron outbreaks, but whichever side wins government will have big decisions to make. But once the election is out of the way, we might hear more talk about getting the deficit down uh, and that could involve, you know, spending cuts or constraints on spending or it could involve tax hikes. Some believe Scott Morrison must also deal with a trust deficit after facing backlash over a Hawaiian holiday during the 2019 bushfires and being called a liar by the French president. Do you think he lied to you? I don't think. I know. That's done damage to his uh, public image. While the opposition leader is facing hurdles of his own. Albanese's big challenge is his lack of recognition. With the election widely expected in March or May, you can bet that both leaders will hit the ground running in the new year. Campaigning in seats they think they can win or fear they'll lose. The coalition is at risk of losing seats in Western Australia. But with its borders remaining closed for now, both sides will send messages from afar. We will be even stronger, even safer and always together. I wish you all the best for 2022. Fiona Willen, Nine News. Violence in Myanmar is intensifying. The country seeing massacres at the hands of its military. Horrifying vision shows towns burnt to the ground in the latest escalation of force against both civilians and the growing opposition. Homes, villages burning in a country terrorised by its military rulers. <laughs> The Myanmar junta escalating violence in the country's northwest. There's been a string of massacres and scorched earth tactics. Three people I knew were killed. There are many others who were injured, says this 26 year old refugee. The military every day committing crimes, terrorist acts against the people. People are dying. Satellite images show the indiscriminate shelling. More than 580 buildings burnt to the ground, forcing whole communities to flee. And on Christmas Eve, government troops are accused of carrying out a massacre in Moso village in the east. More than 30 people, including women, children and staff from the Save the Children aid agency, were fatally shot, their bodies burned. There is growing outrage against the military, which retook power of the country in February. I think the military really, really misunderstood just how hated they are. They're fiercely hated. Guerrilla groups are emerging, calling themselves the People's Defence Force, antagonising a violent military. We believe that the massacres and the, the crackdown and the attacks that are happening in Kanye and Sagain region are a, a direct a result of the People's Defence Forces operational there. Since the military seized power, almost 1,400 people have been killed. The death toll in reality is likely much higher. Lauren Tamazi, Nine News. Hundreds of homes have been destroyed after cyclonic winds fanned a massive fire in Colorado. Tonight, 30,000 people have been forced to flee as authorities declare a state of emergency. Roaring through homes, communities, entire towns. Deep in a Colorado winter, not even the cold could stop the flames. Fierce winds of more than 160 kilometres an hour fanning the wild inferno in Boulder County, out of control. The blaze gutting this multi-level hotel in moments. At the Chuck E. Cheese fast food restaurant, dozens of families were caught by surprise as fire suddenly appeared in the car park. I can't get this door open.
Down the road at Costco, shoppers scrambled for the exit, some still pushing trolleys. The wind almost knocking them over as they ran for their cars. Oh my God. Once behind the wheel, they struggled to find a way through the smoke and flames. We're gonna get crashed on, guys. God help us right now. God help us. Holy 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 Did you guys just see that? Many unaware the homes they were returning to were already gone. This security camera showing how fast the fire hit. It was sparked by power lines toppled by strong winds. More than 500 properties destroyed in just a few hours. Just look at that destruction. Tonight, there are no reports of serious injuries or deaths, and authorities are hoping for a reprieve, with snow forecast to fall tomorrow. In the United States, Amelia Adams, Nine News. More COVID records have been toppled overseas. The US reporting nearly 500,000 new cases in a day. In the UK, so-called surge hubs are being set up around England, each with capacity for 100 patients. More sites have been identified at gyms and schools in preparation for a wave of Omicron hospital admissions. There's also a severe shortage of free rapid antigen tests ahead of New Year celebrations. The Ashes series hangs in the balance with COVID concerns growing for Australia and England. Tanya Armstrong, Australia's Travis Head, is out of the next clash after he tested positive. The South Australian is the first player to contract the virus this series, Natalia. Head remains in isolation in Melbourne for the next seven days while teammates were given the all clear to take a charter flight to Sydney. Under New South Wales rules, they are not considered close contacts and so far have all returned negative tests. But Cricket Australia are planning for the worst. WA's Mitch Marsh and Josh Inglis joining the squad as cover ahead of the SCG test. Two England coaches also have the virus, along with match referee David Boone. The fourth test doesn't start until Wednesday, Natalia, so there's plenty to play out before then. Oh, indeed. Tanya, thank you. Drone vision has captured a two-and-a-half-metre shark cruising off a popular northern beaches, uh, beach. <laughs> These pictures were shot at 3.30 yesterday afternoon at Whitford's. The unknown species lurking just metres offshore at one stage, swimming underneath a kayaker. That is terrifying. Police have issued a warning for revellers to not only steer clear of crime, but also to stick to COVID restrictions as we count down to 2022. One staple event still going ahead as normal is the fireworks spectacular. Ezra Holt, the foreshore where you are, it's the place to be. It is, Natalia. Spectators are starting to gather to get the best vantage points with fireworks to light up the sky at 9 o'clock and midnight tonight. Now, although it is an outdoor event, masks are still being encouraged uh, to people, especially where socially distancing isn't an option. With large events and nightclubs shut down, house gatherings are expected to be in full swing, again, with COVID safe, COVID safe measures rather being encouraged. And even though entertainment precincts should be busy only with seated diners. Police are warning they'll be out in force. There's always those hot spots that are of concern. So we're going to be really agile tonight and respond where the community needs us. We're going to be really highly visible so people feel safe and secure to enjoy those festivities. Most of all, police are asking for people to simply look out for one another as we head into 2022. Good advice, Ezra. Thank you. It does look like a beautiful evening out there. And for more on that, let's bring in Kelly Haywood with your forecast. Kel, we have a warm start to 2022. Oh, we certainly do, Natalia. There is another heat wave on its way. So soak up these 30 odd degree days while we have them. That's exactly what we're doing. We're enjoying the beautiful night out here at Festive Land in Northbridge. That's after we reached our top today of 32 degrees. And right now it is hanging around a very nice 26.1. That was a little warmer in Perth's east today. Gooseberry Hill and the Swan Valley reaching a top of 34. Along the coast, Swanbourne reaching just 27. Rottnest, very cool, 25. And Hillary's 24 degrees the top. And as we party into 20. 
2022 will have an overnight low of 17 degrees and then for the first day of the year tomorrow we will see a top of 30 and then it will start to heat up from there Natalia we have a low intensity heat wave moving its way in from Monday but I'll tell you more about that coming up later on in the bulletin. Okay Kel thanks. Next, a frightening day at work for a supermarket employee. A bandit armed with a trowel smashes in a front window. Injured at the bottom of a cliff in a remote bush setting, a nail-biting airlift rescue. Australian cricketer Steve Smith sees the funny side of a sticky situation. And we take a look at the highs and lows of the money markets in 2021. A terrifying day at work for this employee at a supermarket in Sydney when a man armed with a trowel smashed in the front window. The worker tried to hold the door closed as the attack happened. The man was arrested. Fortunately, the employee wasn't hurt. A woman injured in a cliff fall near Canberra has been airlifted to hospital in a serious condition. The 26-year-old tumbled almost 10 metres while rock climbing in an isolated part of one of the ACT's national parks. Her cries for help heard by a bushwalking off-duty police officer. He called in a rescue helicopter which winched the woman to safety. A federal Greens senator has been slammed over a controversial post on Twitter appearing to support protesters who torched the front doors of Old Parliament House in Canberra. Lydia Thorpe wrote, the colonial system is burning down. Happy New Year, everyone. It was an outrageous, disgusting level of support given to a criminal act. The tweet has since been deleted. A late night elevator ride in a Melbourne hotel has landed former Aussie cricket captain Steve Smith on a sticky wicket. He was stuck for the best part of an hour when the lift malfunctioned until his teammates came to the rescue. After a summer where almost everything has gone right. Uh, I'm currently stuck in, <laughs> stuck in a lift. Uh, I've been in here for about 25 minutes. A moment Steve Smith will never forget just not on the cricket pitch. Not quite the evening I had planned, let's be honest. An SOS raised, Manus Labashane was one of the first on the scene. Hello? Oh, what do you got? There's some food for me. What do we got here? A few M&Ms. That's naughty. That'll do. Thank you, sir. Smith tried to pass the time with a few games. I'm sexy and I know it. But 24's up, he was going nowhere fast. Just an update, it's been 50 minutes, I'm still here. They reckon another 10 minutes, potentially. It's trying to break into the lift. <laughs> what is that? Then, after almost an hour of waiting, freedom. Like making a ton after being stuck in the nervous 90s, Smith was delighted. I'm safely back in my room, finally out of the lift. That certainly was an experience. 55 minutes, I'll probably never get back. Smith now hoping it'll be a while before he's caught out again. Clint Stanaway, Nine News. Money markets have spent 2021 giving investors two things, stress and profits. Those who could handle risk were rewarded on the market, but those with their money sitting in the bank made almost no returns. Chris Kohler takes a look back at the year in finance. Chaos for the economy this year, but on the market, rivers of gold. And another record week on Wall Street. GameStop's stock is surging. One word. Tesla. The getting was good. Record highs cracked on global share markets, property prices soared and so did commodities, but it hasn't exactly been smooth sailing. Yeah, on paper, definitely, we, uh, the market did very, very well. Stress levels, though, was probably a different story. Old money was squeezed out by young investors piling into tech stocks and crypto. Now many feel it's too late to get involved. Warnings still abound. I think there's a huge revolution going on there. It's just that I think the crypto bubble has blown too far. As for the biggest winners, well, risk was rewarded. Bitcoin was a long way out in front. A roller coaster year, yes, but it gained overall more than 60%. Global markets might not be on the same level as crypto, but a 30% gain is historic. 
As we know, those with their money in Australian real estate were thrilled with a 23% price boom. And Australian shares had a big year too, an 18% rise. Retirement savings also went well. The average balanced super fund made 12%. The biggest exception across everything, bank accounts. Safe, yes, but they also returned basically zero interest this year. It's been pretty much a good environment and that's largely because we've seen good economic growth that has boosted profits at a time when interest rates are very, very low. As for next year, veteran investment advisors like Adam Dawes are buying big mining companies and dumping insurance stocks. I'm certainly looking for BHP uh, next year, that's one that's certainly uh, definitely on our radar and the ones that I'd be looking to sell would be in the insurance sector, so something like an IAG I'd be very cautious going into 2022. Elsewhere, it'll cool off. The local property market is probably going to slow down after the huge gains we saw last year. Predictions, as we saw this year of course, can change fast. Chris Kohler, Nine News. Next, the unwanted spotlight turns to Prince Andrew following the conviction of his friend, socialite Ghislaine Maxwell. Show of force, Iran launches a rocket into space as critical nuclear negotiations take place. How a cleaner's foolish actions led to the death of this endangered tiger. And a woman's incredible will to stay alive, trapped in a crashed car in freezing conditions for five days. As her victims celebrate their victory, Ghislaine Maxwell's legal team is tonight planning an appeal. In light of the verdict, lawyers for Prince Andrew are reportedly making frantic contingency plans ahead of a key hearing on allegations against him. Jeffrey Epstein is dead and now his enabler is behind bars for sex trafficking. Was there anyone else involved? That's the question for investigators looking to close a lurid chapter of child sex abuse. A day after Ghislaine Maxwell was convicted of sex trafficking, her victims are grateful they were heard and believed. This is one important step towards justice. And I think, you know, in this particular case, there are, we know there were other people involved. Maxwell's lawyers will appeal. Her family says she's innocent. Legal analysts say the case is far from over. There's speculation she'll flip, cooperate with police and name others involved in exchange for a light sentence. And I think anyone who was connected with Jeffrey Epstein, who either participated in sexual abuse or helped him by way of sending girls to him, trafficking, etc., should be very concerned today. The New York trial was watched closely in the UK, where the tabloids told of panic at the palace, an emergency meeting between Prince Andrew's legal team. He was close friends with both Epstein and Maxwell. And next week, will challenge his own accuser, Australian Virginia Dufresne, who claims she was underage when Prince Andrew abused her at homes owned by Maxwell and Epstein. The prince categorically denies it. Now now, a secret settlement deal could reveal the answer. It's an agreement between Jeffrey Epstein and Virginia Dufresne, signed 12 years ago. It'll be unsealed on Tuesday, another chapter in a saga far from over. In the United States, Michael Genovese, Nine News. Thousands of South Africans have been filing through the Anglican Cathedral in Cape Town, paying their respects to Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who died earlier this week. A simple funeral for the anti-apartheid campaigner will be held tomorrow, according to his wishes, in the very church that was often a sanctuary for activists during whites-only rule. Iran claims its latest rocket test is purely for scientific purposes, attempting to put research satellites into orbit. The launch occurred while Tehran and Washington held talks to salvage the 2015 nuclear non-proliferation agreement. The US and European countries fear the launch of space vehicles will aid Iran's development of long-range ballistic missiles. A cleaner's foolish actions at a zoo in Florida have led to the death of an endangered Malayan tiger. The man reached into the animal's compound apparently to give it a pat when it latched onto his arm and then wouldn't let go. A deputy sheriff first on the scene shot the big cat, sparking widespread anger.
Trapped inside her crashed car in a ravine in freezing weather, a retired nurse survived for five days before being found. Unable to move with a broken wrist and other fractures so severe she could see bones sticking out of her body, Linnell McFarland kept herself alive by making a shelter from clothes and some plastic bags and licking rainwater. Rescue workers had to use ropes to winch the 68-year-old to safety. That is incredible. Still ahead, the new drug offering hope to thousands of Australians affected by a common cancer. How it can halve the risk of death if prescribed early. And Tesla recalls almost half a million cars over safety issues. But first, Tanya Armstrong is here with Sport and Tanya. Two scorchers are in Ashes contention. That's right, Natalia. Cricket Australia hope they're not needed, but Australia must replace Travis Head. COVID chaos as Mitch Marsh and Josh Inglis answer a Cricket Australia SOS. First stop Adelaide for Ash Barty's Summer of Tennis and a new derby date for the AFLW with the Eagles and Dockers sent packing. WA's Mitch Marsh and Josh Inglis have been pulled from the Scorchers Big Bash campaign and into the test squad with COVID concerns gripping Australian cricket. Batter Travis Head is out of the next Ashes clash after testing positive to COVID-19. By the time the Australians finally departed Melbourne, their New Year's Eve had been quite the ordeal. The players retested and their flights delayed. This head of high performance, Ben Oliver, on team protocols, only an hour before Travis Head's positive COVID test was made public. Our medical team have done an outstanding job in helping us navigate um, that across the whole of the pandemic. Um, and we're monitoring that on a daily basis now and considering uh, if there are any additional things that we need to look at. While Usman Khawaja is Head's most likely replacement, selectors have also added Mitch Marsh, Nick Maddinson and Josh Inglis to the squad. It's the second major disruption for the hosts after Pat Cummins missed the Adelaide test as a close contact. But officials are loath to tighten the cricket bubble any further. At this stage, um, you know, our, our planning is, is sort of as it is and we'll keep, we'll keep monitoring the situation. After a breakthrough World Cup victory and an already successful Ashes campaign, Justin Langer's hopes of remaining as coach have certainly increased. Um, Justin's done a great job. I think he really embraced the conversations that were had over the winter um, and, and he's really, really uh, evolved and, and leaned into that. But he'll still be made to wait for any new contract. Cricket Australia with no plans to fast track that process before the end of the summer. England, meanwhile, has also departed, thankfully, with no fresh COVID cases after their own outbreak earlier in the week. Both teams will again stay at the same hotel in Sydney. Ayrton Woolley, nine years. Borders and COVID have forced a reshuffle of AFLW fixtures. Confirmation the Eagles and Dockers will now open their season with a derby at Fremantle Oval next Saturday, January 8. Both teams then facing extended stints on the road until WA's border opens in February. Ash Barty's Summer of Tennis is underway. The world number one touching down in South Australia ahead of next week's Adelaide International. A number of competitors already braving extreme heat and hitting the practice court. Local hope Tanasi Kokonakis starts the new year on his home court before turning attention to the Australian Open. In Sydney, Australia is embracing the underdog tag ahead of this weekend's ATP Cup. Alex Demonor faces two top ten opponents in the group stage alone and Leighton Hewitt says that's just the way they like it. Plenty of heart and plenty of fight, but the odds are stacked well against Team Australia. Yeah, it's an extremely tough group, but... Yeah, our boys have got nothing to lose. Good opportunity to go out there as the underdogs in a couple of the matches and, and really take it and test themselves. And no one has it tougher than Alex Dimonor. First up, he's got Matteo Berrettini, the world number seven. After that, it's Daniil Medvedev, world number two. It's going to be uh, lots of fun. Hopefully I can get the crowd involved uh, and, you know, just show what I can do. Demonor does have a great record in his hometown. One of his finest moments was the ATP Cup in 2020 when he went the distance with Rafael Nadal. 
Alex is a really tricky player, especially here in Sydney, uh, in his home country. Uh, he's been playing, I think, his best tennis here. I, I saw, uh, I believe, two years ago, uh, crazy matches against Rafa. Berrettini doesn't mind it here either. He's dating Aussie tennis player Isla Tomjanovic. I have to say yes, otherwise she's going to be upset. <laughs> No, I like Australia. I like to be here. And as for what the locals love most? The weather. <laughs> Not having to wear a tracksuit and puffy jacket every day. Emma Lawrence, Nine News. On that note, we've finished 2021 Sport. A very happy new year from the Nine Sports team, Natalia, and a very happy 40th birthday to our own Matthew Pavlich. Ah. Oh, very good. Thank you, Tanya, and a very happy birthday to Pav if he's watching. Hopefully he's doing something a bit more fun. <laughs> <laughs> On the champagne. <laughs> All right, next, the simple at-home drug that could halve the risk of dying from prostate cancer. And a newborn manatee calf finds his flippers alongside mum and dad. Plus, Kelly Haywood is in Northbridge for us tonight. Kel, a cool change for the first weekend of 2022. Oh, that's it, Natalia. We've got temperatures in the low 30s for the next few days, but we better appreciate it while we can because we've got a heat wave moving in next week. But I'll have more details coming up very soon. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the biggest stories making news in Perth this evening. WA partygoers will ring in the new year under a COVID cloud. Masks are in, but dancing is out, as one new case was recorded today. A 51-year-old man is dead and a woman has been seriously injured after a horror crash at Ravenswood. Perth's African community is rallying around the Byford parents of a baby girl killed by a falling chest of drawers. And seven children have fronted court over two separate police pursuits across Perth. There's been a breakthrough in the treatment of men with prostate cancer, which claims more than 3,000 lives each year. New evidence shows a tablet currently used for advanced patients can halve the risk of death when prescribed earlier. Will McDonald was told he had prostate cancer last year, just six months after his dad, Ron, was diagnosed with the disease. Mine started when I had a bit of an injury in my left hip. Um, it, it was just a niggling injury that didn't make sense to me. The tumour had spread to his bone. The 44-year-old Adelaide newsreader and journalist previously shared details of his diagnosis. Well, this is a pretty strange and kind of confronting moment. With the aim of raising awareness. But I've come to learn that it's, it's not just something that happens to old men. Each year uh, there are over 18,000 men newly diagnosed with this disease. And sadly, more than 3,000 men lose their lives. Now there's new evidence this tablet called Zytiga, which is subsidised in Australia for advanced cancer patients, can save more patients if prescribed earlier, before the cancer spreads widely to other parts of the body. A recent Lancet study revealed adding the treatment, which starves the tumour of hormones, can halve the risk of death. This is a significant finding. For men who are dealing with this, it provides such hope. The Prostate Cancer Foundation says it's likely these findings will lead to an application to the government to expand the use of the drug so more patients can benefit. While Will and his father are doing well, he wants to warn others. If you do have a family history of prostate cancer, please, please, please go to the doctor. The earlier we detect the disease, the greater the choice we have about how we treatment and the potential success of those treatments. Gabriella Rogers, Nine News. Tesla has sent out a recall for almost half a million of its vehicles to correct two separate problems. More than 350,000 Model 3 cars manufactured between 2017 and 2020 have rear view camera issues caused by damage to cables when the boot is opened. Almost 120,000 Model S need to have a bonnet catch replaced to stop it opening without warning. Wildlife keepers at a zoo in the Netherlands are enjoying a warm and loving feeling towards their latest newborn, a Caribbean manatee calf born this week and now swimming comfortably with its mother and father. Manatees are increasingly vulnerable because of habitat loss. For this family, the zoo has created an artificial mangrove pond. Stay with us. Kelly Haywood is back with all your weather details right after this break.
Welcome back. Well, what a perfect night to round out 2021. And after a year of breaking so many wet weather records, it is only fitting that we have an extremely mild night for the very last night of the year. Now, we reached our top of 32 degrees today. That is after an overnight low of just 20 degrees. And right now, it's hovering around 25. Now, taking a look at the satellite for the first day of the year, we'll see blue skies across the city. But there is a trough hanging over the top of WA, and that will bring some showers and storms into parts of the north of the state. Now taking a look around the country now, Darwin tomorrow, a possible shower and a top of 33. Showers for Brisbane and 27 the top. Sydney, just 29. Melbourne, 37 degrees. Canberra, 31. And Hobart, partly cloudy and 36. And Adelaide, 34 degrees. Now back home in WA, we'll see some of those storms across the Kimberley and Kununurra. Port Hedland will be mostly sunny in a top of 35 and Exmouth is expected to reach 37 degrees. Now, uh, looking further south, Durian Bay will be windy and 29. Bunbury will see a max of 27 and a chilly day ahead for Augusta, 23 the top. Now, for a New Year's Day out on the water, there is a strong wind warning in place for local waters. Seas will reach up to 3 metres, swell around 1.5. And in the city, we can expect a top of 30 degrees tomorrow for New Year's Day before dropping into 17 overnight. Monday, uh, Sunday will be 33. Monday is when that uh, heat wave will move in, 21 to 37 degrees. Tuesday, 36. Wednesday, 37. Then thankfully, it will start to cool come Thursday, 34 degrees. And then Friday, a nice 34 degrees. So thankfully, uh, that weather will not last too long. So there is some relief in sight. And it's a perfect way to kick off our new year and happy new year to you Natalia. Happy new year to you as well Kelly. 2021 started with devastating bushfires and ended with a new COVID variant wreaking havoc around the world. We leave you with a look back at the moments that made us laugh, cry and everything in between. From all of us here at Nine News, have a safe and happy 2022. The blaze decimating homes and livelihoods in Wooraloo. Watch out, there you go. <laughs> Our home's actually gone. Like just that feeling of not knowing where to live. Harrowing scenes unfolding in Kabul where Afghan citizens desperate to escape the fallen capital only to fall from the plane to their death. The devastating path of destruction clear Saroja carved her way through Kalbarri. Thanks for coming and showing everybody, you know, it's important to see the help we're going to need. I love my daughter, I love my daughter. We will never give up, we will never concede. This is not dissent, it's disorder, it's chaos. The situation in India is beyond heartbreaking. A day full of fun to celebrate the end of school becomes one of unimaginable tragedy. I just needed to see what everyone had done and I appreciate it so much, but nothing brings my baby home. The send-off for an extraordinary royal life, a serviceman, consort to the Queen and father. What's your name? What's your name, sweetheart? My um, name is Cleo. What a great day. Uh, we now have returned Cleo to her loving parents. That target of 30 seats has been reached by the Labor Party. The tsunami of red washed over a Liberal Party now in danger of extinction. This is a very difficult loss. It is one that I take full responsibility for. A dream comes true. Australia's Ash Barty is Wimbledon champion. I've got the boy. Australia is in for a show with Optus Stadium the star. History to be made in the West. With the special delivery we've all been waiting for. WA's first shipment of the COVID-19 vaccine. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, people should be able to choose whether they want to get it or not. Tell us why we should have it. A moment dreams are made of. I'm a millionaire!